it was a selfish thing for me to make that beer. It really was only because I needed something for myself to drink, and that sounded like exactly what I could enjoy drinking all day. We made our mark with the opposite of session beers. What really put us on the map were some of our bigger, stronger, more flavorful beers. It's not all about big, crazy, alcoholic beers. You know, you can get the flavor and the satisfaction out of a sessionable beer. And I thought that since IPA is not only my favorite style of beer, but also one of the more popular ones, making a session IPA would be something that I would personally get great satisfaction from. I don't think we really had a place for it at the time in our portfolio, especially another IPA style. So pretty excited that the company got behind it and decided to go for it. People weren't trying to make session beers exciting or flavorful, you know. People were just like, they're gonna make a uh, light, rather flavorless beer. I started working on the recipe in 2009. Balancing was the, was the hardest part. It was a real challenge to not have it come out too malty, not having it too bitter, keeping the alcohol down. It took me a while to get it dialed in, I guess. Mostly, it was just tasting it. I would taste it fairly regularly, and I guess finally there was a batch that I knew that was it. That was the one. I think everybody kind of knew that this beer had a lot of potential. It's not light beer. The only thing light about it is the, is the alcohol content. It screams IPA in every respect. I mean, this is, this is my go-to beer. This is the beer that I can have all the time, all day. Founder style to me means full flavor the finest ingredients, huge aroma. It's really that, that balance that I think defines Founders beers. And that's kind of what I think about the Session IPA. It's classic Founders material without all the alcohol.